So let's make this heart pillow now. It's basically the same steps as the simple pillow we just made, but I wanted to review a few things with the curves when we get up to that point. So I chose these two cotton fabrics that are sort of contrasting in color, and I like that. And what I want to do, now that I'm looking at my pieces, is I actually want to save some of this fabric because I always save my fabrics. You never know when you could use scraps. So I'm going to quickly cut some out. That's just enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these pat these uh, fabrics on top of each other so that I cut once and I get a heart. But this time I am going to trace the fabric. So I'm going to choose the lighter fabric. Well, they're both light. And this one, you can't really tell which one is wrong or right side. And when that happens, you just got to go with your gut. So I'm going to place the heart right on top. And before I trace, I am going to pin. You should always pin, even though you're thinking, well, I'm just going to trace it. I'll just hold it down. You really shouldn't because if it shifts, again, you're going to have a crooked and not so neat project. So because when it comes to curves, I don't really like to cut around the paper I'm gonna do it this way but you don't have to do it this way okay you can just use your shears and cut all the way around this is just me and my preference you, you don't need a dark pencil line remember don't use a marker and don't use a pen they can and will bleed on your fabrics Okay, so if you decide to trace, you're going to remove your pins, remove the pattern, and repin. This way, you're doing one cutting, and you get your two hearts. Again, on the wrong side of my fabrics. And when you're cutting on the line, you need to make sure you stay on the line. So my line didn't connect there, but it's okay because I know I need to just go straight down. So remember, cut all the way down. Close your scissors. There I go again. I'm always making that mistake. Close your shears all the way down and then carefully make your turns. Now notice when I'm cutting, I'm not holding the fabric. You don't want to hold the fabric. You want to always have it flat on a flat surface with nothing in the way because you can actually mess up your cuts if you're not cutting on a flat surface. So remember that I told you before that I like to use my right-handed scissors or my regular standard scissors and I'm left-handed. You saw I picked up the fabric because I struggle, but I just don't like left-handed scissors. They just don't feel right in my hand. I can't even explain it. Anyhow, before you take these out, the pins, you're going to think to yourself, or as you take them out, where are you going to leave your opening? Now, you can't just sew them together because this is the right side and this is the right side. They have to be right sides touching. And we're going to sew around and we're going to leave an opening. Now, when you're sewing curves, you never leave an opening on the curve because if you do, you're going to have a more challenging time doing that blind stitch or invisible stitch. So before I pin, I already know that I'm gonna work here and probably leave this much open. So I'll make my mark there, enough for me to see. And you can draw in yourself guidelines as well. I don't need them because I've been sewing for a while, but if you need them, you can, with your pencil, just draw in a guideline of about at least a quarter of an inch away from the edge of your fabric. I'm not going to continue it because I don't need it. And now I'm going to use a thread that's coordinating, meaning either I could use a white of a color in here, maybe a yellow. It really doesn't matter at this point because I have several colors going. So I'm going to double thread my needle and start sewing at either this point and make my way around or this point and make my way around the perimeter of the heart. I made my way around sewing five or six stitches per inch all around the 
perimeter of the heart and I left my opening there. So here's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to remind you to trim off the little point here and here in the center of the heart here, I want you to just give it a little clip, but don't cut your stitching obviously. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna make these little snippets all around without cutting your stitching all around the edges. This helps the heart turn much nicer without any creases and sort of pulling the heart. And you'll see what I mean when we turn this heart right side out. So I'm just gonna give it these little snips, just a few, about a half inch apart. You can even do further. Make sure you don't snip where you sewed because you're not going to be really happy when you flip it around. Okay, and now just like a t-shirt, like I like to say, you're going to turn it right side out. And on my edges, with the opening edges, I made sure that I made three end off stitches because I wanted to make sure my pillow does not fall apart via the opening when I turn it right side out. It's always disappointing when you do something like that. But it's okay, if you're a new learning sewer, it's totally fine if that happens. It's expected to. So using my finger, I'm pushing all the edges out, making sure nothing is stuck inside. And I have almost something that looks like a heart. Well, it actually does look like one. So now I'm gonna go over to my iron and you already saw how I did that before. Uh, pressing and I'm gonna put one pin here to hold the opening closed. And I'm going to press with the iron so I can create my crease. To my ironing mat and I'm going to use my iron to press and give it a shot of steam right over the opening so that I can create a crease. For this pillow, I'm deciding not to iron it because if I don't have, like right here is a great example, if I didn't push out the seam all the way and I iron it this way, I actually create a crease here and then when I stuff the pillow, I will see the lines and it will bother me. So I'm leaving it just like that. Stuff this pillow. I'm gonna remove the straight pin and my opening is right here, so I'm gonna think to myself, I always wanna stuff the furthest points away from my opening. So we're gonna start stuffing the furthest points, which I believe is this right here. If you start stuffing other places closer and you don't stuff the furthest places, um, it's gonna be hard to get into that spot and you it, it'll be challenging. So why do that to yourself? So how great is this? It's coming out nice. Now you can make these for your friends as well. You can personalize them. So you can buy different fabrics and according to your friends' colors, that their favorite colors, or if they're into sports, you could buy a sports printed fabric. Like if they love lacrosse, you can get a lacrosse printed fabric, make them a simple pillow, make them a heart pillow. You can really personalize them, something so simple. And I think a handmade gift is always so much more special because that person took time to create it for you. And I mean, I just think that's great. Everyone can have their own opinion on it, but I love when I receive something handmade. All right, so I'm stuffing. Now I'm going to get the little corner. Remember, I'm using my finger like a hook, getting that little point. And I'm pushing all the way through. I see here, I feel that it needs a little bit more. So I'm going to use my point turner. And I got to say, sometimes when it comes to stuffing, my finger really is the best tool to use. How cute is my heart so far? And here we go again. I'm going to get into the corner or the point, I should say. And here we go. And now, again, I am going to do the invisible stitch. So if your opening is really large, what you can do is you can actually put a pin to keep the opening closed. 
And then as you get up to the pin, you remove it. So you'll start sewing. And as you get up to it, you just remove the pin. So I've already started my blind stitch and I'll continue it here just in case you need a refresher. You're gonna stay and sew on the inside folded over flat. You're not gonna make your needle go through because if it goes through, you're gonna see the thread and then it's not invisible as the name of the stitch says. Okay, then I go back across the street. I'm now back on the yellow. And now back across to the blue and white. Now across the street to the yellow. And you keep repeating this process until you close up this hole of your pillow and it just looks wonderful and clean. Practice does make perfect. When I first did the blind stitch, I recall feeling so challenged and saying, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Show me an easier way. But I got to say, years later, it is the easiest thing. It looks a bit like I'm struggling because the uh, heart is a little hard to hold this way. But um, I typically, like I said in my past uh, video, I like to put the pillow against sort of like my stomach and hold it in place, but it's hard to video on that angle. So I just continued it this way. Again, I'm gonna pinch it close as I get to the ends and I'm gonna keep stitching. That was a little bit of a big stitch. Let me see if I can fix that. Well, I'm gonna just hope it doesn't open. And here we go towards the end. So now, this is my last closing stitch and I'm going to go back into the yellow on the inside like I've been sewing and I am going to do two end off loops. So I'm going to pull one and I always use my needle to kind of stuff it back in there. Now I'm going to do one on this side just to secure it in place too. And then I'm going to put it in the seam in between, so in between the fabrics. Okay, so right in the seam through any side of the pillow, I'm going to cut the thread and that end ended up somewhere in that stuffing. And now you have your pillow. I put a ribbon on the pillow and if you'd like to see how I attach that, just stick around. I decided to put a blue satin bow on this side of the pillow. Although I was debating on this side for contrast, sometimes the most difficult part of finishing a project is making your final decisions. So I'm gonna make a quick little bow. No rules here, just whatever size I want. And then I'll trim the tails if they're too long. So let me just play with this so that I get it to the size I'd like. Okay. Here we go. I'll bring this around. And I think it will be really pretty if I keep it on the blue side. Sometimes when you make a satin bow, you just gotta, just gotta move it around just like I did to get it to look like a bow. Because if you just tie it, it, it needs help. Okay, so I have this bow here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it here. But first, I'm going to trim the tails. I like to cut them on an angle. And then I'm deciding that I might want to add a possibly a button. So I have my little collection here. And I'm thinking something white. But... I could always change my mind. Oh, how cute is that? Let's go for it. Now notice I have changed my thread color to coordinate. This way, if there are any mistakes, you can always, it can always hide. So I'm flipping my bow over and on the back, I'm going to do one quick stitch, come up through it. And this is where you might need your, rib, your um, thimble to push through. 
I got away with it, but you might need it. And then this button happens to be one that has an attachment part like this. So it's super simple. And what I'm gonna do right here is just sew a couple stitches. Pull and then go right under there, go through the plastic button and then go through the bottom of the bow. Again, through the plastic button and then through the base of the bow. I don't have to get it on tight so, like I don't have to keep sewing it that many times because to be honest with you, no, it, this isn't a shirt button. There's not gonna be pressure on it. It's just for decoration. So now I'm gonna bring my sewing needle all the way through. If there's any messies here that I feel, this is from my knot that I feel might show, I could trim it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach it to the center here. So how you attach it is you make just a simple little stitch, just like that, in and out, just like you're pinning, okay? In the center or wherever you want it, and you pull it. What I'm gonna do, because now this is the same color, is I'm gonna go over it and go under here because by going over it it's grabbing the bow down to the heart pillow and I'm going to pull but if you don't have coordinating thread you might not want to do this because it'll stick out. I'm going to go under here give it a little stitch back here always under the bow so no one sees where your stitching is. I'm going to go over this way just to tack it down. I'm going to go under And I'm gonna go under again. And I'm thinking just in case I give this to someone who may be a little rough with it, I think I should repeat the process. So I'm gonna go through it again, tack it down. Remember, only if you have coordinating color, right? And then under into the pillow, tack it down. And now we're gonna do our final stitch. All the way in the back, we're going to do an end off. Make sure as you're pulling, I'm sorry if I was out of the way there, as you're pulling, you don't pull any of the bows out of shape, like the sides of the bows, I mean. Okay, so now as it's there, I'm going to go under and I'm going to do a nice little finishing stitch. One. I do one first. Now I'm gonna go in through the loop. If you forget like I did in the first one, going through the loop, it's not a big deal. Just repeat it. Trying to get a hold of this and keep it in the camera. And do a little finishing, pull the loop there. Trim it super close without cutting the bow or anything else. And there you have your adorable heart with bow that you can actually give to a friend as a gift.